we uh, are still holding it by hand, so you guys are gonna go, what the hell? <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? You know, because the mount for the camera is actually on the table. The mill shakes quite a bit. Yeah. I, I, I got or, one with an eight thousandths radius. That won't break off immediately. Uh, hey guys, this is a quick little video on uh, fly cutting with our new D'Andrea facing and boring tool. Uh, so we welded some heads uh, earlier today and then uh, let them cool and then we heat treated them in our in our oven and now we're going to fly cut them with the D'Andrea uh, to basically test out the new method of fly cutting these heads. And I think it turns out pretty well, but uh, you, you can see for yourself. And so, yeah, you can see in these videos that my dad's just welding up the quenches to uh, fill the gap between the quench and the head gasket surface so that we can fly cut it. Okay, so D'Andrea, TA120. So you saw us weld it, now we're gonna cut it. Yep. So we've already, <laughs> I don't know if you can see. We've been playing with this. We've been playing with it because uh, we don't really know what we're doing. No. Nope. So this, we've already cut the a, other two. This is a bit of a. Cylinders, chambers. Yeah. And the. And this is a pretty insane process. We'll do a couple, yeah. There's a couple steps to this cut that we have to do. Yeah, we're gonna, to get we're gonna work line. down several steps on the, on the weld. And then the last cut is out to the head gasket surface just shy of the head gasket surface actually. And then at the end, I will wheel this to the zero. And then we'll bore. And then we'll raise it up, slow the thing down, and we'll bore down, which. And we'll just cut this, just barely, the spigot yeah. opening. Yeah. And then other than this, these heads also have already gotten a valve cover surface machined. And then they will get this top surface also machined, just yeah. flat and square with yeah. the rest of it. Yeah, and that'll be after the fact. We aren't even gonna but use this for that. We're probably not gonna show that because we already showed it in another video. And this is really just showing the difference. And before, remember, you had to use an end mill to cut down the whole thing, then come back through. Because the because the because yeah. that blade, you couldn't use that blade. No, I couldn't use the blade at all. You couldn't use that blade when uh, the weld was there because it would jump too much. Right, this is the VW tool with its blade uh, and you can see it's just rudimentary for sure and it cuts and it just cuts this whole this whole edge just drags along and cuts in a big circle which is fine it's okay except the, the because this is a, a high silicone yeah. content alloy it kills these high speed steel cutters in a short order i mean we are using a high speed steel blade in this right now, but we have ordered carbide, carbide index blades, indexable cutters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can see this process. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's very different than what we've been doing before. You're very different. And it's uh, we got to hang on us. to it. We don't, yeah, it took a bit to figure it out. We uh, are still holding it by hand. So you guys are going to go, what the hell? Who <laughs> cares? Who cares? You know, it's we just, we have to hang on to it. We don't, can't th see there's gonna be a pin that comes down and, and centers on this. To lock later. the head from rotating, because the rotation. The body, yeah. The, the body needs to be stationary for the mechanism in here to operate the boring, the facing part of the, the head. Yeah, and you can see right now the way this is set up. This is the, this moves back and forth. This is the, this holds the tool. The tool goes in there and there, or there's the cutter. And so we had to offset this a ton in order to get the right diameter and the right cut. We also have it set so that it will stop automatically mm -hmm. as just, it goes out. Yeah, just, just shy of the finished. Yes, yeah. So OD. this will, it'll be automatic. The thing you're probably gonna see, which will be very evident, because the mount for the phone, for the camera, is actually on the table. Yeah, The mill true. shakes quite a bit. The and problem is, is the whole, this, the whole because thing is it's offset. spinning, at a pretty good rate, even though I've slowed it down quite a bit. It creates a mass, an offset mass, and you'll see it go shake, and then it'll get to a point where it's very smooth when the mass is balanced, it's halfway in the middle of the cut. As it continues, it gets to the other point and begins to shake. Yeah. It's the nature of the beast. It's going, it's going that way. It's going yeah. that way, yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's set the this. depth already. Yeah. That's good. 
William's gonna try to help. Are you ready? Here we go. Yeah. It's very insane. Makes a beautiful finish though. So it gets very smooth. And then as it goes, it's very smooth right now. And that's basically it. Wow, everything shakes. But yeah, it's very smooth. Uh, at a certain point, it makes a very nice finish. I don't know if you can see how nice that finish is right there on that. It's, it's very gorgeous. Oh man, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, and this handle works really well. Yeah. So that's very nice. The whole thing is working. I might. Let's, well. I'm gonna move this. It's just it's stupid to have to hold this whole thing. Yeah. Okay. This way it won't shake, and we'll just go through the process. Yeah. It's a little further away, but okay. Whatever. Next cut. You don't want to get your hand down near it. No. A lot of crap swinging around at a, at a pretty good pace. Looks really funny when that, when this moves back into place where mm -hmm. it's centered, it looks like it's coming into focus, like you're focusing yeah. the camera almost. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. It's really crazy. <laughs> All right, I've got a here's a little bit of close up, guys. You ready? This is good. should be the final cut. All right, now let's cut to uh, final. We need to get the zero and the zero. Cool. Mm -hmm. Looks very nice. Now, now we're gonna go slow and drop it down and just bore it out. We have to go slow because you should go faster, but we have to go slow because the counterweights on here or the, the center of mass being off, it shakes so much that it actually will cut more than we actually want. Yeah. It'll shake the table and shake the part too much. It'll cut, what, about 10 thou oversized, maybe? I don't know, something Per like side, that. yeah, per side. The, the center uh, chamber, the first one we cut, is about 20 over, but these are gonna be big bore heads anyway, so this allowed us to have the problem without any effect, because this is gonna have to get bored bigger as you move through the, the build. Yeah. The whole idea on this was to get a proper finish on the head gasket surface and to be able to do everything without having to switch cutters and cut the quench first and then go back and cut the other thing and then you know fight trying to get the finish that we need on the head gasket surface and this appears that it's just this gorgeous head gasket surface which I like a lot. Yeah. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So that's it for this head. Now it's another setup and repeat and repeat. Yeah. 11 more times. Yeah, <laughs> but she was pretty fast. Of course, with a, it's getting quicker. It, by the time I get through this dozen heads, it'll probably be a lot quicker. Yeah. But you just gotta take hey. your time and figure out what in the world you're doing. Yeah. Hey, and hey. what in the world it's doing. But it's uh, it makes for a beautiful finish, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's, uh, that's the result. Incredibly smooth. Yeah, just really uh, smooth. And it'd be better with the new cutters that I'm gonna get. Yeah. I'm getting the diamond shaped uh, carbides because mm -hmm. these are high speed steel. Yeah. Uh, on a 3 8 shank, square shank cutter, which will fit in the tool holder. Yeah, in that same holder. And it'll come in at an angle, so it'll just cut across and then we'll just cut down and just be beautiful. And I got one with a very small radius 
Because we need a pretty sharp. Yeah. I, I, I got one with an eight thousandths radius. Wow. That won't break off immediately. Uh, yeah, it looks very good. There's a couple pits up here. There were there was corrosion uh, on these the head gasket surface up here. That's why uh, he welded up that area. Yeah, this one they had corrosion. This one you can see the corrosion all in the chamber already. But yeah, all these all these had corrosion. But uh, now they're very very clean. Yeah, yes. this has still a little tiny bit of corrosion, but these are going to be big bore anyway. So we'll have minimal problem. <clears throat> they won't have a problem with the. Yeah. It's going to have a solid copper head gasket. Yeah. But you can see the, all the black down in here. I had to weld this up a little bit. Yeah, it's, uh, it just had corrosion in there from water sitting. Mm -hmm. You know, when, they, when people pull these engines out of a car or they leave them in the car, leave the, the engine cover up, even though it has maybe carburetors on it, when it gets rained on, the water goes past the carbs, goes in the engine, fills up whatever cylinders have the valves closed, and it sits there. Yeah. And so this is probably five years worth of sitting outside. I've got some that are probably 20 years outside and they're actually just trash. The ports are eat up, uh, the heads all eat up. It just needs to be cut up and made into something else. Yeah. So that's, uh, it's very nice. It's very... It's really nice. You can see the, the, the weld imprint or the, the pattern from the weld. Yeah, yeah. The... I like that a lot. That's just really, really cool. Yeah. It's a pretty great tool. That's and, really uh, nice, yeah. Yeah, just something cool we want to show you guys. Yeah. So, cool. Thanks Hope for watching. Hope you guys liked it. Yeah. Adios.